these underwater drones are known as remotely operated underwater vehicles rovs these facilitate the remote exploration of marine environment scientific film making oil pipelines submarine structure ship and many more these underwater drones also allow users to perform various activities underwater without need to go inside the water physically hence eliminate the risk of associated with diving to explain the technical activities which can be performed by these drones and their various applications we have with us two highly knowledgeable experts who will be explaining the technicalities of these drones i on my behalf and the, on behalf of uttarakhand uttarakhand state center institution of engineers welcome our honorable national president institution of engineers engineer hemant othakre who will be joining later on and our chairman marine engineering division board commander bm bhandarkar and our chairman committee for advancement whether have not joined kate mr uh, dr g ranganath who have spared their valuable time in attending this webinar i also welcome our learned panelist engineer akhil manasri mr chatter rashid who is joining us from morocco i also welcome our moderator and the main personality behind the webinar mr amit kumar singh executive member of uttarakhand state center and engineer sc chauhan honorary secretary uttarakhand state center dehradun all the technical members executive committee members corporate members from various states distinguished guests students ladies and gentlemen who are joining this webinar from various places from india and abroad now i will be requesting our moderator to take this uh, to prog um, of this webinar to start this webinar as per the program thank you thank you sir for your wonderful words now would extend warm welcome to commander dr b m bhandarkar chairman marine engineering division board institute of engineer commander dr b m bhandarkar he is highly educated former chairman indian institution of industrial engineering he is a board member asia pacific institution of engineering and management society api ems japan he is a lot more than the introduction and in various international assignments honors and awards Lillian Gilbert Award, Top Most Indian IE Award, Prime Minister Trophy, Continuous Three Years, Rama Swami Award, Coal India Productive Award, Shiksha Bharti Award, Distinguished Engineering Awards, Distinguished Triple IE Service Award, International Achiever Award, Commendation by Flag Officer Commanding in Chief twice. On the publication, he edited two books, twenty-seven proceeding and fifty-seven technical papers. Awards in honor of Dr. Bandarkar, Dr. Bandarkar Award. for the merit student in ien production engineering by bjti mumbai university and by nagpur university commander bhandarkar leadership award for ceos and cmds for visionary leadership and institution building sir we hope under your leadership and guidance bold will do miracle i would like to invite commander dr b bhandarkar for the formal address sir over to you please sir please unmute your uh, microphone thank you engineer amit kumar singh ji for this uh, elaborate uh, introduction honorable dr hemant thakre president institution of engineers india who has devoted four decades of quality life for the cause of institution of engineers for kolkata and motivated many engineers like me to excel in the field of technical excellence dr g rangnath ji chairman kate whose sagacity is ushering a new chapter in the technical and academic excellence in institution of engineers Sri Dharma Chandra Chairman, Uttarakhand State Centre Institution of Engineers, 
and a visionary leader. Engineer S. S. Chavan, the dynamic honorary secretary of Uttarakhand State Centre. My friend, Engineer Amit Kumar ji, the indomitable force behind this seminar. Mr. Akhil Manisari and Chetta Rashid, distinguished speakers of today's webinar. Committee members of Uttarakhand State Centre, distinguished guests, participants. media personal dear students ladies and gentlemen it gives me immense pleasure to extend my best wishes to all the participants of this most relevant and happening webinar well the mankind is looking to the water bodies not only for the means of transportation but for the very survival of human race in the coming decades we know nearly 90% of world trade is through water wage water wage are found to be most cost effective as well as environmental friendly means some transportation trade how we have the basic needs of human race like food shelter and minerals in the coming years are going to be provided by water bodies the land based production resources will be limited the water bodies have 70% 71% by area by volume and the oceans hold 96.5% of this thus the importance of underwater vehicle in the coming days is going to be phenomenal broadly speaking we need underwater vehicles for oceanographic research surveillance mining of minerals underwater inspection deep sea rescue and in the shipping activity as well these are very few benefits of underwater vehicles or usages of underwater i could uh, uh, think at this moment but there are many areas where underwater vehicles are going to be of import going to play very important role now we see we are fascinated by aerial aerospace drone but is that technology is utilized to the full extent for the underwater drone well there are limitations the sea technology the exploitation of technology for the underwater vessels is most most challenging aspect the thorough nature of sea water the sea water pressure and transmission and attenuation of underwater signal are problematic they are challenging areas i have spent 30 years of my life on the various sort of submarine which is also underwater vehicle well we have distinguished speakers in the mr manisari and chetta rashid and i hope they will uh, tell us lot more about this wonderful thing and uh, i wish all the participant very best from this webinar thank you very much thank you once again for giving me this chance thank you thank you chairman sir for your encouraging word we will now move to our proceeding just sharing my screen for the quick brief of today's topic underwater drone and its application
Is the screen visible, sir? Yes, visible. Thank you. Drone are best known for the taking to the sky, but many of us may not be aware that drone are also hard at work in the oceans and underwater environment. Underwater drones are generally equipped with a camera mounted in the waterproof enclosure with thruster for maneuvering obstacle avoidance sensor, various payload as per the task requirement and powerful lighting to record good quality footage even in the dark underwater environment. From depth of the ocean to outer space, bird is using drone more than ever before. For underwater environment has always been risky zone for human equities. Diver has limitation to depth and time of operation. Cost of diving operation is very high. So benefit of underwater drone can be understood. You cannot manage what you don't measure. Here is the answer, underwater drone application to measure to manage in below such domain, like in power sector, for nuclear power plant, boiling water reactor, visual expression for the stress corrosion, dams, submerged structure, defect analysis, railway bridges, submerged structure inspection, post repair inspection, ships, port. Like many emerging technology that enhance communication with facility, underwater drones can improve security speed, effectiveness, and overall response capacity, allowing real-time observation analysis of the infrastructure security and environment situation across the port. Underwater drones are integral part of the port monitoring system and play major role to the smart port. Benefits of underwater drones and applications are wide. It can be sent to underwater in any situation, so never put people's life at risk. Dive to discover some documentation from the past how roofs have performed some challenging tasks. It was even underwater drone that discovers wreck of Titanic in 85 by Dr. Robert and Ashnogafer. Even Japan has developed a uh, row Kaiko, which touches the deepest part of Marina Trench Challenger Deep. Unfortunately, in 2003, it has lost during some operation due to typhoon. Even in 2019, our largest religious gathering, Kumela, underwater drones were deployed to maintain a close watch on the riverbanks and deep water for ensuring safety and security of the pilgrims and preventing them from the drowning. Dear all, this is India's first commercial underwater drone, IROV Tuna. And I'm happy to announce one of the representatives of this company is our panelist today. IROV was founded in 2016 by two intelligence engineer, engineer John from IT Delhi, LOE, and engineer Karpa, IT Madras, Edomani. Now I would like to invite our first key speaker, Mr. Shatar Rashid. Mr. Shatar Rashid is Western Traffic Supervisor within the Port Authority of Tengia City, Morocco. Mr. Rashid is skilled in marine navigation, operation management, international shipping and safety management system. In 2019, he also joined the marine environment research as a PhD student, Department of Earth and Environment Science, University of Adelaik Malik Esadi, Morocco. Mr. Rashid, the floor is yours. Please over to you. Thank you, Mr. Amit. Thank you, everybody. So, I would like to thank uh, the NCT of Engineers in India to give me the opportunity to participate in this webinar and also uh, present um, uh, an exhibition about this interesting uh, technologies underwater robotics. I, and, uh, I would like also to thank all the, the, the presents engineers, senior engineers, and the presidents and all the audience here. So I will share with you my, my screen. Uh, so before I start, I would just like I would like to mention that Morocco, our country, is still um, beginner in these technologies. 
So we don't develop any of, of them. So we still export them and their use is very limited. It depends on the large uh, use of project and the, uh, the amount of finance uh, uh, allocated to such projects, uh, such as uh, projects of oil and gas and um, external research uh, projects. So Dipsy operation, so Dipsy operation can be more challenging than space exploration. When astronauts send messages from the from the moon, there was a 1.2 second delay before they were heard on the Earth. Uh, and when aquanauts sent signals from the challenge uh, from the challenger bit, they took five, uh, seven seconds to be received. Only the most advanced technologies can help us explore this complex uh, depth and frontier. And nowadays, underwater inspection and monitoring are essential for many industries and companies. So operators, companies operators deploy professional divers, but their effectiveness is, li is very limited, especially at great depths and in rough seas. On the other hand, as maritime operation and aquatic research expanding into deeper waters, more remote location or more complex condition operators need more intelligent, safer, and more effective solution. And is why we use these technologies. So the table of contents of my presentation um, as follow. We'll start with introduction. We'll talk about the history of this underwater robotics. Also, ocean depth and exploration methods and different uh, uh, technologies used dependent on the, on the ocean depth level. Uh, and we'll talk about raw development, configurations, classifications, that is very important in the industry of these technologies. And also we'll talk about degree of autonomy and application of the of rov and ofs in the in the in the port sector principally so as an introduction to underwater drones so remotely operated underwater vehicles or underwater drones are submersible waterproof drones that enable users to explore marine environments uh, remote, uh, remotely so rovs can be more specifically described as a teleoperated Free swimming robotic and main underwater vehicle. So these drones are able to navigate through underwater currents thanks to one or more propellers. ROVs are generally equipped with a camera mounted in a waterproof enclosure with thrusters for maneuvering, obstacle avoidance sensors and instruments, and powerful lighting to record good quality footage even in dark underwater environments. Also, ROVs are incredibly complex and serve a wide variety of purposes, from exploration and, uh, and in main expedition to research and sporting events. They can be found in a variety of sets of fields, such as aquaculture, water and energy, research, shipping, offshore, etc. It works either wirelessly or through a wired connection. Although the wired is more common as a wireless technology has limitation for underwater application. The controller is manually operated in most cases and autonomous underwater vehicles are limited in this field owing to the various challenges presented. Signals from the controller inputs are either wired or wireless based on the level of innovation and design. It may also be a task specific. And now we'll talk about the history of these underwater vehicles. So in, the, in 1953, it's claimed that the first remotely operated underwater vehicles were simply raw. Every bolt was the puddle, as you can see in these two uh, pictures. That was made by Dmitry Rybikov, a French pioneer in dive equipment and photography. 
the sorry uh, mr rashid is it possible to make the screen full uh, because we are getting some messages from the audience okay i think it's okay now yeah yeah yes. thank you so much okay. yeah yeah okay so so I, I i i repeat so it's claimed that the first remotely operated underwater vehicle or simply prove everboat was the puddle made in 1953 by dimitri Rybikov, a french pioneer in dave equipment and photography so the puddle was an and main adaptation of his dive scooter with a tater and and uh, and the surface and the uh, attractor and surface controls. However, the vehicle was used primarily for archeological research and its impact on royal history was minimal, but it was a start and beginning to, uh, to, to research in this, in this field. After that, the US Navy take the first real step toward an operational system starting using ROVs in, uh, in 1960 for recovery of underwater equipment and continue to advance uh, this technology through time. Navy's problem was the recovery of torpedoes that were lost on the seafloor. The curve cable control under sea remote vehicle was developed by Space and Naval Warfare Systems Center in San Diego in the early of 1960. It was initially designed to recover test torpedoes lost of San Clemente Island at depth as great as 610 meters. So Curve was a prototype for remotely operated underwater vehicle on that time and a pioneer for tilling operation. So always in, in the raw history, in January of 1966, near to the coast of Spain, Palamoras of US Air, a US Air Force B-22 collided with a KC-135. <laughs> scattering debris and four 70 kiloton hydrogen bombs over the Spanish coast. The three of the nuclear bombs were recovered on land, but the fort was lost in the Mediterranean Sea. Was like with a combination of divers, divers and the woods of all oceanographic institution is made submersible. This, this uh, Alvin after, Alvin after two one half months uh, search, the missing atomic bomb was located at depth of 870 meter. So to retrieve it, the Navy employed its new Curve 1 cable controlled underwater recovery vehicle, which snagged the bomb and the pullets to the surface. So the worldwide publicity of Palomares incident, Palomares incident briefly elevated the visibility of marine robotics, but they largely remained submerged in military scientific and offshore oil application. Through 1970, 1970, commercial industries began to use ROVs in earnest for commercial operation. Underwater drones even saved the crew of a work, work submarine during 1970. In 1973, the crew from the remotely operated vehicle Curve 3 performed the deepest underwater rescue in the history when it rescued two men uh, from depths of 480 meters in the ocean surface, from the ocean surface, who were stranded 76 hours in the main submersible pieces three with just minutes of air remaining inside us. This is three, a Canadian not small deep sea commercial submersible was used to lay trans transatlantic telephone cable on the sea bottom of Ireland in 1973. When a buoyancy tank was inadvertently floated, it sank to the bottom of the ocean with a two-man crew. 
assisted by the submersible of pieces two and pieces five, curve three was at that time able to attach a recovery line to the pieces three and successfully pulled the doomed crawl to safety. The CCGS John Cabo, Cabo raised curve three at 18, 30 meters per minute until their lines entangled. The lines were cut, curve three was abandoned, and pieces three was floated to 18 meters where scuba divers were able to attach line that were used to lift pieces three the rest of the way to the surface. So here we have some pictures showing this operation and different materials and and uh, underwater drones and submersibles used to, to this risk operation. So the curve tree became also known in the Great Lakes region in 1976, when it was used to survive the wreck of the SS Edmund Fitzgerald in 530 feet, around approximately 160 meters. So the most famous decade that he heralded the arrival of underwater drones was in 1980. It was even an underwater drone that discovered the wreck of the Titanic in 1985 by Robert Ballard, an oceanographer and former naval intelligence officer. In 1982, in search of in the search of Titanic. Uh, cruise ship Robert Ballard approached the US Navy as a possible source of funding. The Navy, uh, the US Navy cared little for the Titanic, but was very interested in developing Ballard's fiber optic video system for deep sea survey and its potential to examine the debris fields of Treasure and Scorpion submarines lost. Uh, in May 22, 1968. So their tasks required a new type of rov. They developed this machine with help from the Navy. The latest version enabled the discovery of the famous wrecks on Titanic and Bismarck. With Navy supports and his highly classified mission presented to the public only as a search for Titanic, Ballard is, Ballard is Argo survived and photographed both submarine wrecks, yielding invaluable, invaluable, data, invaluable data to his covered sponsors, completing the secret mission's final objective with 12, just 12 days, 12 days to spare. Ballard's team used Argo to find the wreck of Titanic on September 1, 1985, to worldwide acclaim. So a year later, Ballard brought the Woods, uh, the Woods Hall veteran deep diving main submersible, Alvin, to the Titanic. The public was able to see deeper into Titanic is ghostly dick through the fiber optic eyes of Jason Jr. Later, the submersible was joined by another called Hercules, and the two highly sophisticated rovs brought the technology to prime time uh, television. So by, by 1980, there were more than 500 ROVs around the world, many of them being used in commercial application. Since then, ROVs have become more common in a wide range of industries and, and applications. And there are tens of thousands of ROVs in, in use around the world right now. So in 1990, drones began to do more extensive work. Newer drones models could now disable mines and do other duties that once relied on human divers. Methods of deployment and battery life were also improved. This improvement lead to an even more extensive array of industries that used the drones. In the 2000s, saw a massive boost to underwater drones and in their development, a lot of improvement and increase in capability and reach. The reason behind this was the improvement of the lithium ion, lithium ion battery 
lithium-ion battery technology as this method of energy storage improved. So two, the deconstruction of drones. In decades past, a drone would require a tremendous data and a full research ship to deploy. But uh, nowadays, it became possible to deploy them of much smaller in a much smaller vessel. Modern drones and modern drones are far more advanced than anything that came before them and innovation continues to. For ocean depth and exploration metals, as you can see, we have here a subdivision, um, a vertical subdivision of the ocean where a different depths are, are mentioned. And also we have different technologies, underwater technologies and uh, submarines that have been used through, uh, through the past. So as you can see, the deepest point in the ocean, uh, Mariana Trench was reached by Trist in, uh, in 1960. Regarding the rope development, so Japan developed the Kaiko, a rope that has reached the deepest parts of the ocean, uh, approximately uh, 11,000 11, uh, meters in the Mariana Trench on March of uh, 24, uh, 1995. But before that, as we said before, Trist. Uh, was already reached that, that uh, the approximately at that depth. So the Keiko was a two vehicle system. The launcher, which connected to the ship via 12,000 meter electro optic primary umbilical, and also handled the 250 meter secondary cable to the vehicle. And the free swimming vehicle that could operate around the launcher within just 200 meter radius. So modern underwater drones are like miniatures. Submarines without crew, the submar submarines without crew. So these submarines drones are challenging to send radio signals to. They can be autonomous using their onboard sensors to function. Another method is a long dictator that allows for a direct connection between ship and drones. Most underwater drones use a line that connects them to the operator. Operators can manage the title, the elevation, and orientation of the vehicle in real time. Cameras act like eyes, allowing the operators to guide the drones uh, to its targets. An underwater drone works by controlling its buoyancy so that it doesn't sink like all underwater vehicles. They have crash depths and can be designed for different operating condition. The motors they use push water and allow the drone to move about either by command or on their own. So there are mainly two rough uh, configuration, open frame, uh, open, or open or box frame rows and torpedo shape. So the open or box frame, as you can see in the in the in the, the picture on your left. So we have a lot of equipment that can be seen there. So as I, as I just like uh, light light uh, lights, uh, thrusters, uh, the buoyancy uh, fr frame, and also uh, a lot of equipment just like camera, battery enclosure. And on your right, we have the torpedo shape. That's uh, that's uh, just like a uh, uh, closed closed structure, uh, and include a lot of instruments inside of it. So rovers typically have an open frame to allow for fluid flow through the frame due to its higher number of internally mounted thrusters. So <clears throat> ovs typically have a closed frame for an interrupted fluid flow around the vehicle for a minimal drive at higher speed. So the open frame or the box frame is the most familiar of the rough configurations where all the operational sensors, thrusters, and mechanical components are included. This configuration, as you can see in these three uh, figures, is useful for station keeping 
for slow speed observation, tasks for close inspection uh, uh, or sensor and tooling delivery in light current. But it's not suitable for tool application due to very poor hydrodynamic design. So most world class and heavy world class roofs are based upon this uh, configuration. So roofs come in all shape and shapes, uh, shape, uh, shapes and size to address different needs, but they generally have some. The thrusters are electrically and hydraulically powered propellers used to maneuver the vehicle. So they are almost always a multiple thrusters to provide movement in a multiple direction since the vehicle travel deep underwater. The only view that the pilot technician has through the onboard camera, which must be able to provide an image with low latency. So the light provide illumination for the camera underwater. Sunlight disappears rapidly underwater and many roofs emission occurs at depths that are normally in complete darkness. So, and here in this, in this picture, we have the main component of a rope. So you can find the tater, thrusters, the frame and the camera, and also the lights. For the off configuration, so the torpedo shape is common as a common configuration for data gathering or inspection class roofs. And this kind of technologies are used frequently in, in the, in the, in the ocean mapping flow. So frequent, uh, so it's referred to as a uh, towfish, since they are more often used as a tow drop. They also call autonomous underwater vehicles. In military application is more often referred to as an, a main underwater uh, vehicle or underwater gliders are a subclass of uh, autonomous underwater vehicles. Concerning the all the, uh, the off configurations, so the torpedo shape offer a low hydrodynamic resistance, significant control limitation, requires high speed to remain stable as position and attitude concern, highly vulnerable at high speed, slow speed from zero to four knots uh, in this level in this in this interval suffers from numerous instabilities, taters induced roll and pitch, uh, current induced roll, pitch and yaw. It has limited control surfaces at uh, the tile or stern, which easily cause overcompensation and stabilities. So OVs typically exhibit the classical torpedo shape with a high aspect ratio and minimal number of thrusters coupled with control fins for long, for long distance travel at higher speeds. Regarding the, the classification of this underwater robotics of technologies, we have four categories based upon vehicle size and their capabilities. So the first category for class is the observation class robots. These vehicles go from the smallest micro robots to a vehicle weight of uh, 100 kilograms. They are generally smaller, DC powered, inexpensive electrical vehicles used to add a backup to a diver as a diver substitution for general shallow water inspection tasks. Vehicles in this classification are generally limited to depth writing of less than 300 meters of seawater due to the weight of the, of the power delivery components and one atmosphere pressure housing, which imposes limitation Open the vehicle and it's it's used. So the second class is mid-sized class. These vehicles weigh weigh from 100 kilogram up to 1,000 kilogram. They are generally a deep rated version of observation class robots with sufficient as AC power delivery. Alternating, alternating uh, current power delivery components and the pressure housing capable of achieving deeper depths over longer theta uh, length. This also are generally all electrical vehicles, powering prime movers, 
and uh, that's uh, that's called also thrusters and camera movement controls with some hydraulic power uh, for the operation of manipulators and the small tuning package options. Due to the weight of these vehicles, a launch and recovery system called LARS, as well as a theater manager system is often needed to manage their operations. Vehicles in this classification are sometimes termed light work class vehicles to fully differentiate from uh, the, the observation class ROS. So the third uh, type of class is world class props. This kind, this kind of type of vehicle in this category are generally heavy electromechanical vehicles running on high voltage, uh, more than 3000 volts, uh, AC circuits from the surface to the vehicle. The power delivered to the vehicle generally is changed immediately to mechanical. Uh, power at the vehicle for locomotion, locomotion as well as all manipulation and tuning function. So the fourth class and last class of the underwater vehicles, remotely underwater vehicles, is special use vehicles. Special use ROVs systems describe tighter underwater vehicles designed for specific purposes. An example of a special use vehicle is a cable braille rob system designed to flow the seafloor to vary telecommunication cables. So regarding the degree of autonomy of these uh, underwater vehicles, according to the National Institute of Standards and Technology Huang 2004, in 2004, in main vehicles may be operated under several modes of operation. And uh, these modes are fully autonomous. That's mean a mode of operation of an, an main system wherein, the, uh, wherein the, the, uh, an main system is expected to accomplish its mission within a, defi within a, de within a defined scope without a human intervention or need. A team of UMS may be fully autonomous while individual team members may not be due to the need to coordinate during execution of team missions. So the second mode is semi-autonomous, a mode of operation of uh, a main system wherein the human operator or the UMS plan, uh, the UMS plan plans and conducts a mission and requires various of levels of human robots interaction. The intervention and the third uh, mode is silly operation a mode of operation of a main a main system where in the human where in the human where in the human operator using video feedback and uh, and other sensory instrument feedback either directly controls the motors actators or assigns in uh, incremental goals white points in mobility situation on a continuous basis uh, from off from off the vehicle and via a tethered or radio acoustic optic or other linked control devices. In this mode, the main system may take limited initiative in reaching uh, the assigned incremental goals. And the last remote control, uh, the last the mode of, of autonomy is the remote control. A mode of operation of an, a main system where in the human operator without the benefits of video or other sensory feedback directly controls the actuators uh, of the EMS on a continuous basis from, uh, from of the vehicle and via a tethered or radio link control device using visual line of sight uh, cues. In this mode, the in main system takes no initiatives and relies on continuous or nearly continuous uh, input uh, from the user. So, uh, as you can see in this in this in these two figures, 
that schematize and under uh, highlight the, 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 the underwater communication systems. In the first one, we have four of, of uh, types of this, of this underwater, underwater communication system. We have the microwave and we have the blue lead and the blue LD based underwater communications. Regarding the application of ROVs uh, and OVs, we have three, uh, three sorts of application, commercial one and the research uh, one and air crash investigation application. For commercial one, the oil and gas industry use, uses to make the type maps of the seafloor before they start building subsea infrastructures, uh, pipelines and sea subsea completions can be installed in the most cost-effective manner with minimum disruption to the environment. The OV allows survey companies to conduct precise surveys of, of areas where traditional uh, bathymetric surveys would be less effective or too costly also uh, costly. Also, uh, the, the unmanned underwater vehicle are used for pipeline inspection and inspection of underwater made structures. So for research scientists use of to study lakes, uh, the ocean and the ocean floor for long-term data collection. In the oceanography and coastal management, different sensor, different sensors, uh, different sensors such as conductivity sensors, temperature sensors, salinity sensors, and depth sensors, uh, flu uh, fluorometers, and pH sensors can be fixed to measure uh, the concentration of various elements and parameters or compounds for oceanographic and oceanologic uh, studies and research. So the OVs can be configured as two vehicles to deliver customized sensors, packages to specific location. Uh, so for air crash investigation, autonomous underwater vehicles have been so have been uh, have been used to find wreckages of missing airplanes, for example, of Abyss was used in the search for Air France flight uh, and the Bluefin for Malaysia Airlines flight. And now uh, we'll talk about application of these uh, technologies in the in the in the in the port sectors. Uh, the, the, the regarding my uh, my expertise and my, my my experience in the in this field. So we can use this these technologies in two kinds of uh, of uh, of application that's aligned with our responsibilities. So in bo in boating and shipping inspection. So underwater inspections in dry we can be used in dry docking. Uh, they can be comp can be completed with the a ROV along with a certified survivor. Uh, this survival can also use internal HD camera accurately documents, it can document and record the condition of the hull markings, sea chest, inlets and discharges, rudders, paintless and sacrificial panels and propellers. And also we can use up uh, this uh, underwater remotely remotely underwater vehicles in ports and marinas so routine inspections demands uh, demands are key to the care and maintenance of any submerged uh, submer submerged infrastructure so inspection of ports and marinas have always been uh, uh, hard use and difficult and often dangerous but today with these technologies with submarine drones and robotics they offer a solution that eliminates the risks to deploy divers and also greatly reduce the high costs associated with inspections. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for informative presentation, Mr. Rashid. I think every attendee has gained knowledge about underwater drone.
Uh, now, I would extend my warm welcome to Dr. G. Rangnath, who has joined from his busy schedule. Dr. G. Rangnath is chairman of IE Committee of Advancement of Technology and Engineering and principal and professor of mechanical engineering at Adhiman Engineering College. He also served as chairman of the Tamil Nadu State Center for the session 2016 and 2018. Dr. Rangnath is also member board of the Management and Engineering Staff College of India, Hyderabad. He has vast experience in the field of mechanical engineering, presently serving National Executive Council member, IST, New Delhi, and syndicate member, Anna University. I would like to invite Dr. G. Rangnath for some words, please. Over to you, sir. Thank you a lot, Amit Kumar Singh. Nice of you. I don't know where you collected some information. I should thank you. First, let me express my apology to all of you. I was uh, late in joining. But I can say I'm lucky, at least I had enjoyed one lecture from a speaker. Nicely was given. It's a beautiful information. I was ended up in another meeting from 3.30 to 4.30. That's what I was unable to join. So, Dharam Chindraji, Chairman of the Uttarakhand State Center, and Bandar Karji, both of you should excuse me for late arrival and joining you. So let me come to the today's topic. In Argentina, President H.O. Thakreji, then Council Member from Marine Engineering Division Board, as well as Chairman Marine Engineering Division Board, Engineer Bandar Karji, Chairman of Uttarakhand State Center, Engineer Dharmachandraji, Then S.C. Chandraji, who is an honorary secretary of Uttarakhand State Center. Two eminent uh, panelists who are the speakers of this uh, session, where I enjoyed already one uh, session, of course, not fully, partially at the end. Another uh, panelist, Akhil Mansaria. And Amit Kumar Singh is doing a wonderful job as a moderator. And I noticed nearly 100 attendees are there. Wonderful. I am so thrilled. 111 is already registered, including all of us, I believe. That means more than 100 attendees. So, good evening to all of you. I am very happy to spend some time with you. Today's topic is, of course, it is an online webinar. Underwater drones and this application. We can understand the topic. But speaking on topic is very, very tough. Only panelists they can speak because they are experts. And this can be again denied by our Bandar Karji, who is an again expert in the same field. But let me talk on our IEI, particularly the panelists as well as our chairman of Marine Division Board and our attendees. Sir, IEI is century world forum in the country which is available. There are so many other forums that taken about in India, maybe in computer science field, electrical field, and so on. But our forum is a century old forum, and it is the only prestigious forum for engineers in India, which is having composed of 15 divisions like mechanical, civil, chemical, computer science, electronic communication, electrical, and so on, up to marine division. We are enjoying this division now program and online wonderful webinar. But unfortunately, the members enrolled this division is as and today available is very, very less in IEI. My appeal to the division board chairman and panelists, moderate. I believe attendees are maybe graduates in marine division. My appeal to all of you, sir, your uh, microphone is in mute. Kindly unmute, please. Sir, kindly unmute, sir. Oh, you're not listening so far now. Thank you, sir. Now,
नॉमिनल but they can become members here life members not only marine engineering graduates even like civil engineering graduates electrical engineering graduates or environmental engineering graduates those are working in the this marine domain if they are going to give supporting documents as if they are working there as an engineers in the same field there is a possibility we can enroll them As a member in the institution of Marine, that's what I want to say to Bandar Karji. In your period of this four years, being you the dynamic council member came to the board, and you the chairman also. Please take your own steps to bring as much as possible a good number of members, new members, to the board of Marine. At least. in the four years span not less than another 400 members we want to add in the board of marine this is my appeal to our bandar karji because you are having a big network and all marine engineers who are in the country working in different different areas like maybe bombay chennai visakhapatnam gujarat and so on you will have your own network communicate to them mp sir or division boards also i want to tell to all of you we are very happy to give a financial support if the program is going to be in offline maybe one day seminar or two day seminars in all india level or regional level and there will be one convention will be there, marine division convention will be there every year will conduct one convention in every division similarly till today Marine Division two zero two 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 zero two three till no one is opting. Any centre who are having good resource persons in that locality and is having a good uh, even in the palace like today, please come forward. We will give you one fifty thousand. That means one point five lakhs final supporters. We will give you to conduct this uh, convention. Our appeal is. the kinetic convention we want good panelists who will be resource persons and again we are going to honor two engineers minimum two engineers one young engineer one elderly person or any engineers in the field of marine in all the level we are going to honor so this is all i can tell you openly where you going to feel proud of the iii so do come forward and today topic is going to be a wonderful topic The two panelists are invited by Chairman Dharma Chandra Ji. Professor Kar Singh Center really appreciable. My heart full la greetings to you and the Honorable Secretary and Bandar Kar Ji. Please see that as many as possible good programs like this, either online or offline, depends upon situation. You conduct, bring marine division also nowhere in between any other division in having technical bonus. For younger generation in the country, that the people should feel proud of our uh, field and proud of our IEI. With this, let me thank our Dharma Chandra Ji, the Chairman of Uttarakhand State Centre, Honorable Secretary, Engineer Chauhan Ji, and our uh, Amit Kumar, who is a moderator, 
nicely you're doing the job to panelist and above all the year of this function engineer bandarkar ji who is the chairman of marine engineering division board and also I'm very happy to congratulate the technical department of iia the king chu and other peoples those are really showing good interest to conduct this type of programs by coordinating the divisions and host centers like state center local center and so on with this let me wish all the attendees it is a wonderful opportunity for all of you listen and enjoy because it is a so important domain underwater drones and these applications i really enjoyed our tatatar rashid who has given lot of lot of beautiful pictures along with explanations with this again let me thank all of you for congratulating host center and division board chairman and dimin gal so thank you all let me take leave of you because i have to meet another meeting from 6 to 7:30 thank you thank you sir thank you chairman and thank you chairman so we'll meet both of you in uh, sk hyderabad at 25 thank you sir for your wonderful words and showing us a vision to make our program and uh, i ever is more successful in the future thank you so much sir thank you sir now we'd like to invite our second key speaker mr akhil mansri let me just share my screen to elaborate about him indian akhil mansri he is assistant sales manager iro technology private limited engineer akhil has completed btech degree in marine engineering from kochi university of science and technology he has also has a me class 4 marine engineering offshore supply vessel dynamic position type 2 vessel and has also worked as a sales engineer in hydrographic survey and oil spill response company currently is taking care of sales and marketing of irov private limited engineer akhil floor is yours Uh, kindly unmute please your microphone yeah thank you so much amit kumar ji thank you for such a wonderful introduction uh, it is my pleasure to be presenting in front of such honored panelist honored chairman and uh, in front of all the attendees uh, from institute of engineers india uh, uh, mr dharm chandra sir chairman Mr. Bandarkar Sir, uh, Dr. Ranganath Sir, and Mr. S. Chauhan Sir, uh, it is my honor to be presenting in front of you. And uh, my co-panelists, Mr. Chatter Rashid, uh, it was a great introduction to the history, applications, and classifications of ROVs. I hope all the attendees are much aware and uh, have gained. pretty good knowledge about the rovs so i am representing iro iro is india's first underwater uh, drone manufacturing company so we 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 are we were established in the year 2016 and it has been a uh, four years of a pretty hard uh, r and d uh, considering the drone manufacturing i'll just share my screen and we will start with the topic i hope my screen is visible yes please yes sir it is visible sir yeah so uh, myself akhil and i am representing iro technologies private limited uh, i have been working with the business development division of iro technologies and uh, as i said before iro is india's first underwater drone manufacturing company so our aim is to provide safer and efficient underwater inspection and surveillance solution 
serverless solutions using underwater robots. Just to brief about the company, we are an underwater marine robotics company into the inspection and analytics of bridges, uh, so, dams. Sorry, Engineer Akhila, your yeah. slides are not moving, please. Is it uh, visible now? It's still on the first slide. Slides is Kindly visible. scroll, sir, or use slide viewer. Uh, yeah, I am on my second slide. Just a second. No, sir, till the first slide is coming, sir. <laughs> Yeah, now it's okay. Yeah, yeah, not even. Is it okay? Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, so just uh, giving a company snapshot uh, and a small brief introduction about our company. So IROV is a marine underwater robotics company in, uh, and we are especially into the inspection and analysis of underwater assets, which are bridges, dams, pipelines, offshore structures and ship hulls. So IROV is India's one of the fastest marine robotics company. We are providing uh, underwater solutions to almost all the underwater stakeholders in the country. It was founded by uh, two of my co-founders, Mr. Johns and Mr. Kanapa. Mr. Johns uh, uh, is, was working with uh, and a private company from Samsung and Mr. Kanapa was working with the NIOT. So uh, the history of the company is such like that uh, Mr. Kanapa was working in a research vessel with the National Institute of Ocean Technology. And one day he happened to see the divers uh, coming to inspect the underwater uh, hull side of, the, of his vessel. And uh, he came across uh, various and uh, various problems using the uh, conventional diving methods used for this underwater inspection. Uh, that sparked the thought of uh, inventing an underwater robot, uh, designing it in India and manufacturing it in, in India, uh, so that most of the challenges which are being faced in, in this country can be sought out. Uh, that came up with uh, IRO, IROV, and uh, it was founded in the year 2016. And uh, we have been funded by two of the most prestigious public sector companies from Gale and BPCL, uh, who are mostly into the oil and gas division. And uh, we have completed around 40 plus projects across India and uh, completed around 2000 plus hours of underwater inspection uh in various application and various sectors like sports dams uh, marine vessels underwater pipelines offshore structures etc uh, we have won a top eight industrial startups award for in the year 2018 and uh, we are awarded with the technology startup award uh, 2021 by department of science and technology uh, government of india so this, this is a brief uh, uh, organization and uh, we are a startup company and uh, we are uh, uh, projecting uh, many more projects uh, in the coming years. I'll show a small video uh, regarding our company profile and our product IROV Tuna. the video is visible
Ira is a fast-growing marine robotics startup company providing advanced underwater inspection and surveillance solutions. Ira Tuna, our first product is a microglass designed to perform visual inspection of submerged structures. It is a safer, efficient, and cost-effective underwater intervention capable to do works up to a depth of 200 meters and can be easily controlled using a laptop and joystick. A camera fitted onto the underwater drone gives a live video also has provision to attach external sensors like sonars, NPT testing equipment, etc. based on the inspection requirements. IROB Tuna finds a variety of applications in the inspection of dams, bridges, underwater pipelines, offshore and onshore structures, and ships. It also has applications in defense, particularly for the Navy. Disaster management, underwater research, and coral reef study. Till now, IROB has worked with NPOLDRDO, BPCF, Mares, Indian Railways, and various other dam and bridge assets. I hope the uh, video was audible enough. Yeah, it was audible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I hope Mr. Rashid has already given an introduction about uh, ROVs. Just wanted uh, to brush it up with uh, like what is exactly underwater ROV. It is basically a submersible robotic vehicle uh, used from shore or by in the water to generally inspect the all the underwater assets, whether it is a ship, whether it is a dam, whether you, uh, the ocean floor, any any underwater assets, any research purposes, all those can be inspected using the underwater drones, uh, underwater ROVs, um, which are classified according to their usages, uh, according to their sizes, according to their applications. So, like, uh, briefly, it is classified into two, the observation class ROVs and the work class ROVs. So, observation class ROVs are generally used to give an underwater videographic uh, output. So, uh, it is just a camera which, which, is, which can be operated and which can be maneuvered uh, from the operating station and it gives the videographic footages of what is exactly underneath the water and uh, the work class rov work class rov is generally huge rovs this can be used to actually manipulate things underwater like if you need to uh, tie a rope you need to open a wall uh, you need to uh, take a part of uh, the ocean floor all those things are achievable using the work class ROVs. And many more applications are there like cable laying, uh, like uh, changing the position, all those things can be achieved using work class ROVs. These ROVs are very um, huge and uh, rugged enough and uh, it needs various uh, large system to operate uh, from the vessels and it can operate in uh, very large depths of water. So briefly, these are the two classifications of ROV. So why, 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 why should we use ROV? Why not conventional uh, divers? Uh, there is a need for change, uh, especially in the underwater sections. There is various risks, risks of human lives involved. Various accidents had, had take place. So um, uh, this conventional diving system has to be changed into robotic inspections. For this, ROV plays a key role in this. Uh, also, uh, the videographic footages which we obtain is then analyzed and uh, uh, report is being prepared, uh, prepared using our software packages. This software analyzes the video using machine learning algorithms and uh, various other image corrections are done, various video enhancement is being done to give a, a better clarity video outputs. Uh, so all those things, uh, all those things are uh, eventually replacing this conventional paper reports, which are hard copy reports, which are 
difficult to track uh, when the things were done or uh, the uh, reports may get lost. All those things may happen. Using the software-based reporting and analytics platform, it is quite simpler. You can analyze the video, or you can analyze uh, the report from anywhere in the world using cloud-based reporting systems. So uh, along with the uh, uh, ROV videographic inspection, you will also need the uh, software for the reporting and analytics platform. So uh, yeah, so coming to this, uh, there are around 60,000 plus dams in the world, more than 40 lakh bridges, uh, 10,000 plus offshore assets, 60,000 plus vessels around the world. All these things need underwater periodic inspection uh, to, uh, for the safety of the system, uh, to check the structural integrity. All those things has to be periodically checked. And uh, for this, various underwater inspection uh, requirements are, are to be carried out. Uh, talking about the conventional diving system, uh, data collection in the hostile environment was very difficult. Divers can't enter into very confined spaces. Uh, they can't uh, go much deeper into the ocean depths or water, uh, water bodies. So taking data from those kind of uh, remote locations was very difficult. Uh, uh, and it was very inconsistent. Uh, we, we will have to totally uh, depend upon the uh, diver safety and the output which we, which we are obtained from the divers. So it, it was very inconsistent. Uh, the second thing is with the data processing and conditioning because the defect identification was totally manual. No one knows what exactly the divers were taking out uh, and the data was given. Uh, so it, it was just human centric and it was very stressful and time consuming. For, um, for example, if a thousand square meter area uh, uh, has to be inspected using uh, conventional diving methods, uh, we generally do not obtain the whole area that needs to be inspected. And the time taken is 10 times that of uh, by using the ROV. So th this, uh, this needs to bring change and use of technology has to be implemented. Data reporting, like I said before, paper-based data are tough to backtrack, no predictive analysis is there. Using our software-based analysis and cloud reporting platform, uh, if you have uh, vessels after inspection done this year, you can do the underwater inspection next year, compare the data, what all things are missing, how much corrosion has taken place, all those things can be done. And this gives a very great idea about the underwater side of all the assets. So why IROV? Uh, we, are, we are an industry, we are a patented design. We have a patented design for underwater drones and uh, uh, we are uh, we are supported by the uh, Make in India from Government of India. Uh, IROV has a live HD video streaming, so the pilot can uh, lively locate the uh, videographs. It can maneuver the ROV according to the constraint conditions. All those things can be done uh, using the live HD streaming. It is very portable. Uh, the Iro Mini, which is our uh, basic version, is only 18 kgs. So two, uh, two people can easily handle it. There is no need of any huge large system uh, for deployment. And it can work in very shallow waters, like two meters of depth. So all those things, like conventionally, huge ROVs were used in offshore sectors, in the oil and gas sectors. But uh, this kind of mini ROVs uh, are to be implemented in the inland waterway sector for the ports study, for the dam infrastructure study. All those things were not in use. And uh, uh, so our solution was very confined. Our ROV is like 50 centimeter into 50 centimeter uh, into 50 centimeter. So the size is very confined. 
uh, it can go in very uh, confined spaces and uh, the maneuverability is very much high it can cover areas uh, and uh, it has speed of two knots all those things are there uh, are the advantages of aerob tuna uh, aerob can work in very adverse water conditions like uh, for the turbid waters we can use imaging sonars as payloads so sonar imaging can be used as such in high water current it can withstand up to two knots of water currents uh, the basic mini version uh, it can go up to 300 meters of water depth so even the reptile infested areas like some of the dams in india are being crocodile infested areas so their underwater inspection cannot be done using divers in those areas also uh, rov plays a very important role uh, because it uh, there is no human risk involved at all. Uh, along with this, uh, the our EWAP, Enhanced Visual Analysis and AI-based software-based reporting platform uh, plays a very important role in the report analysis and uh, uh, in the video enhancement and the um, image correction, all those things. The report-based analytics platform plays a very important role. Uh, these are some of the images on the right side, you can see these are some of the uh, images extracted from the undergraduate videographic footages that we have done for SPMU and HAL inspection service. Uh, in the second image, you can see the original image what we obtained and the corrected image uh, on the right side, you can see that uh, that is achieved using our uh, image correction algorithms in the software platform. So uh, uh, these all things uh, uh, enhances the quality of data which you will receive. Many other bathymetric data, sonar imaging, all these applications, all those sensors can be uh, integrated as payloads and uh, ROV application can be customized according to the requirement. I hope I am not going too fast and uh, no, it's uh, all all good. Please yeah. carry on. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, this is the conventional ROV system deployment. Uh, you can see the water surface over here. So above the water surface, there will be a tether reel, the control station, and uh, below the water, it, there will be ROV with the tether. So the tether is basically the communication and power cable. Uh, the ROV can either be powered using battery or it can be externally powered. Uh, we have a joystick to control the ROV and uh, the control station. In the control station, we have softwares uh, where we can see the video, live video and uh, we can control the thrusters, control the speed of the ROV, the moment of the ROV. All those things can be controlled over here and uh, it has got various depth sensors uh, we would, uh, and various navigational uh, sensors required <laughs> for the smooth operation of ROV. So this is the conventional method uh, for the ROV deployment and these are the components involved in it. Uh, we have basically two models of ROV. The humpback one, which was obsolete, which is now obsolete, it is uh, it is the first model which we had tried it out, and uh, uh, it was a bit uh, rough end model. Uh, just integrated the sensors and uh, developed our electronic module. All those things were integrated, and uh, a rough model was uh, 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 done. Uh, was used for various undergraduate videographic inspection services. But uh, that is now obsolete and we have come with a uh, fully fledged uh, uh, workhorse, iRogue Tuna. Uh, iRogue Tuna has completed around 2000 plus hours in the underwater uh, inspection. Uh, it is a 100 meter depth rated ROV. It can withstand up to uh, sea state two, that is two knots of water currents and it can handle up to 2 kg of payloads like uh, various imaging sonars or side scan sonars, uh, various NDT payloads, all those can be integrated with Tuna. 
Turt is a greater version of tuna and uh, it is more advanced. It can uh, uh, go up to a depth of 200 meters to 300 meters. And uh, it is basically in the design and manufacturing stage. Design stage is already completed, but it is yet to be released in the market. So this is a brief about IROC Tuna. Uh, it gives a SD video recording. It has two cameras. One is the HD, one, HD camera and one is the low light camera. Uh, it, it is just, like I said before, it is just 18 kgs and uh, it can be easily portable and two people can deploy it uh, in any of the water bodies. Uh, just 50 centimeter cube. Uh, it has a rather line, it has got a tether length of 300 meters. So uh, a sufficient uh, amount of tether is given and it can, it is all customizable since we are the manufacturers of ROVs. It is all customizable and uh, uh, re according to the application and requirements of our customers. Our, uh, um, there is also 6,000 lumens LED lights, six numbers of LED lights are there to give a better visibility and a better videographic footages. So these are basic specifications for uh, IROP Tuna and coming into IROP TURT, TURT is 200 meters to 300 meters depth rated and uh, it can handle heavier payloads up to 4 kg. The size and uh, weight is to, uh, a bit high compared to Tuna since it has the uh, power endurance is more and the thrusters thrusters configuration is more. So um, tuna can handle which uh, can withstand up to uh, water currents which are uh, more than uh, four, four knots of water current. So uh, this is basically two models uh, which we are producing. These are some of the payloads. Uh, the laser scalar one, which is the which is our in-house developed, and the turbid water mod module. Uh, the turbid water module is like uh, if the water clarity is very low, if the water turbidity is very high, we cannot uh, get uh, clearer videographic footages. So a module is uh, fitted into the ROV. Uh, as you can see, there is a screen-like thing, and we inject fresh water in front of the camera. So the area around that, uh, around that camera will be clearer and we get a uh, clear image of the asset we, which needs to be inspected. The laser scalar one is um, used to uh, identify the, uh, uh, identify like um, the dimensions. Yeah, particularly the dimensions of the defects or anom anomalies like if we see a crack uh, in the wall of a dam so uh, how long is the crack that can be identified uh, using this laser scalar uh, it is just a laser beam so accordingly we can measure the dimensions uh, and it is uh, uploaded in the in our software like this various uh, payloads are there like the cp probe the thickness gauge. There is a side scan sonar, imaging sonar, uh, pipeline detector, uh, external camera, additional cameras can be integrated. There is USBL system, uh, which is mainly for the posi positional reference system. Because underwater, if you go, we don't have a position reference as, of, as such. So we use a USBL system. Uh, which is directly integrated via the tether cable and uh, you will get the actual geo coordinates of that locations. So that case USBL system has to be used and the various uh, manipulator hands, uh, jet cleaner, some of the parts, some of the ship hulls uh, are always with uh, marine growths and all those things.
so it needs to be cleaned first before getting a videographic actual image of the ship hull so this kind of jet cleaner can be integrated with the rov and uh, the area to be inspected can be uh, firstly cleaned using the jet cleaner and uh, eventually videographic images can be obtained This is our uh, aero visualization and analytics platform, the cloud-based software, which was uh, which I was talking about, and uh, it gives uh, uh, basic visualization and analytics of all the assets which we uh, inspect. So digital reporting is there, automatic detection of defects uh, powered by. Um, artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms analytics report based on criticality so even if the defects are uh, taken uh, what is the criticality of the different uh, defects that that is also given through the software and it gives the uh, enhancement of uh, less clarity videos so better clarity images are, can be seen like you can see in the left hand corner you can see the original raw data which is obtained using the camera and the enhanced version uh, using the software based video enhancement in the right side you can see pier 1 and pier 2 these are piers uh, for railway bridges which we have done so each uh, piers which which uh, are uh, inspected we give a detailed analysis of this thing. And if you click on each uh, side, you will get a videographic uh, evidence of what is the defect exactly which we have obtained. Uh, in the right corner, you can see a dam wall, which is inspected. The blue is the water area and the brown color is the uh, river bed. Uh, so all those things are uh, eventually put on a platform which makes it very user friendly user can log in to this account from any of the locations he can analyze the data analyze each section of the uh, dams all those things can be done using our platform now coming to the various applications of rov uh, the first of it is the hydro project uh, uh, i think uh, dharm chandra sir could you please <laughs> Hello. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, so these are the various applications coming into the hydro projects and uh, uh, dams uh, across any of the countries like uh, the dam upstream wall downstream wall inspection has to be done sluice gate inspection which is normally under the water uh, there is thrash rack and surge tank inspection can be done even the stilling basin area uh, uh, has to be inspected sometimes the pen stocks uh, there may be some leakages we will have to identify the location of the leakages some of the tunnel inspection has to be done some uh, uh, because there are several dams uh, which do not, do not have exact data of how the tunnel is, where it is going, many data are missing. So all those inspections can be done using ROV. The next is the search and rescue application. Uh, in the search and rescue application, uh, many a times imaging sonars and side scan sonars has to be used uh, to identify the uh, identify the object faster because uh, searching with the videographic inspection uh, videographic uh, camera would be uh, difficult in the search and rescue kind of application so firstly we get the geo reference data uh, we sync it up with the usbl system 
we then uh, scan the area using the side scan sonar. You can see <coughs> yeah, using the side scan sonar, uh, you will identify a uh, image which is not clearer. Then using the imaging sonar, we will move further ahead. And uh, you can see the image of the boat, sonar image of the boat which has been sunken. So this can be verified using the uh, videographic um, camera by going nearer to the object. So you can see the image has been verified using the videographic camera. The depth has been noted at 15.4 meters, the depth has been noted. So the heading is 164.9 degree heading is there. All those things are data can be overlaid using various sensors that are integrated in the ROV. And uh, once the video uh, footages are taken, we can assure that the object is there at this location and currently uh, salvage operations can be taken place. So this is one of the main areas where search and rescue operations uh, for uh, main areas for search and rescue operations ROV uh, can be used. Other areas of application is the in the offshore uh, industry is the pipeline inspection, riser inspection. Uh, the riser legs in the rigs needs to be inspected. Sometimes the well needs to be inspected. All those inspections can be done using the um, ROV. And many a times in the well simulation, in the offshore sectors, uh, work class ROVs are used uh, to control the valves, to make check check the temperature, all those things. Uh, many a times work class ROVs are used mainly in the offshore sector. Water tank inspections can also be done. Uh, uh, many a times water tanks get uh, damaged due to corrosion and all those things where in some of the chemical tanks also. So all those locations without dewatering or removing the substance, we can uh, deploy ROV and uh, check the integral part of the uh, tanks. Other applications, like I said, jacket inspections can be done. FPSO vessels can be inspected and the pipes uh, during the FPSO operations can be inspected. The anchor chains for various uh, uh, bunkers, various vessels can be inspected during uh, uh, during anchorages. Mm, various decommissioning services before decommissioning, pre decommissioning, and post decommissioning services has to be done in the offshore sector. So all those uh, things, underwater inspections, can be carried out using ROV. The other applications which we have done, one of the artificial coral reef study for Kerala State Coastal Area Development Corporation. Uh, this artificial uh, uh, coral reef was deployed a year ago and they wanted to learn uh, the fish inhabitants over there. What is the fish culture? Uh, like, was there any use? after deploying such artificial reefs. So we is that was a hanger here, no? inspection uh, after a year yeah, and it's you it's can it's see it's the it's images it's over it's there. It's like, it's uh, it's the it's fish it's culture has been... So these kind of various applications like ports and walk study, like for the cable laying survey, for mine survey, for NDT survey, uh, various offshore pipelines, gas pipelines, oil pipelines need periodic inspection of corrosion and uh, various NDT methods are used uh, to check the cathodic protection. All those things can be done using ROV. These are various applications of ROV. Now coming to our case studies, uh, I have uh, established some of the case studies relevant to different sectors. This was one of the case study for a uh, railway bridge underwater inspection. Like you can see the piers in the um, railway bridge, it has to get periodic inspection and periodic repairs has to be done. Like many a times, most of the rivers in India are getting flooded every year. And there is a huge impact on that on the uh, concrete piers. So uh, this concrete piers needs to be inspected. Likewise, uh, 
the Indira Sagar Dam, uh, which was one of the major dams for NSDC, Narmada Hydroelectric Power Corporation. We have done uh, the upstream wall inspection uh, for this Indira Sagar Dam. Uh, it, it, it has a huge dam. We covered around uh, 15,000 square meters of uh, area and uh, the reports were submitted. Yeah, the, for this uh, mask, uh, one of the ship mask around, we have done the hull inspection uh, in the Cochin port. So uh, in the video also, you can see uh, some of the hull inspection that was the, done from this survey. For the pipeline inspection, uh, it can, like I said before, the ROV can enter in very confined location. So in the top uh, corner, you can see like the, uh, you, can, uh, you can deploy the ROV in very confined spaces from manholes uh, and we can control it uh, using the using our control station and the whole structural integrity of the pipeline can be assessed using the videographic footages. This oh, this was a survey done for a BPCL pipeline inspection in Cochin itself. We have conducted a search and rescue operation for the Indian Army. One of the Indian Air Force helicopters uh, were crashed in the Patan Kot area. Uh, in Rajasthan and uh, after uh, several attempts uh, from the defense sector, uh, uh, they were unable to find uh, the crash landings and the damages. So uh, we were deployed over there upon their request, uh, we were airlifted from Cochin and we were successful to find out the, the crash elements from the uh, reservoir. So this was uh, one of the key operations with search and rescue operation, which we were involved in it. Uh, this was one of the SPMU uh, inspections for BPCL, which was also done in Cochin. So apart from this, we are also developing autonomous surface vehicles. Uh, like uh, ROVs, these surface vehicles are mainly used to carry out the hydrographic survey and search and rescue operations. Uh, these vehicles do not go underwater, but it will be on the uh, surface of the water, uh, mainly used to carry out uh, sedimentation study, to carry out the bed mapping, all those things, uh, the multi-beam data, hydrographic data basically. Uh, it has got various other applications also like the water quality monitoring, like uh, it can, we can set a path to it, it will go to that location, uh, take the water samples from like if we set the water depth like 5 meters or 10 meters, it will take the water samples from that location and it will come back to us. Uh, so we can obtain various water samples from various uh, location in a reservoir. And uh, so this, this helps in analysis of water samples, uh, water quality monitoring at uh, for a reservoir and uh, various search and rescue operations can be done. Various hydrographic surveys in the shallow waters where huge boat with huge sensors are difficult to deploy. Their uh, ASVs uh, will be of utmost importance. Some of the dredging channels in India uh, where, uh, where dredging is difficult, uh, where hydrographic survey is difficult, uh, these uh, small surface vehicles can go there, collect the bathymetric data, collect the profiling and uh, come back. So this is one of the areas which we are developing. It is in the developmental stage and we are expecting it to be in the market by uh, next quarter of this year. There are also other types of uh, robots, uh, like uh, uh, in the session by Mr. Rashid, is already mentioned about autonomous underwater vehicles. These are torpedo-like structures. If we give a path and a particular area to map it, it will go, uh, it will map the area completely and it will come back to its original location. Uh, 
uh, it has got all the autonomous control systems to avoid obstacle avoidance system. All those control systems are there. Various mapping technologies are being included in it, and uh, various designs in various designs it is being available. So these are various autonomous underwater vehicles. Uh, other thing is like sea gliders, buoys, wave gliders, drifters. All those things are mainly deployed in the ocean waters. For the research and uh, research uh, purposes, in the scientific research purposes, they need to have uh, various wave data, various current data, uh, many weather parameters, many uh, uh, seabed parameters on a daily basis or or in a periodic manner. So these kind of robots. Uh, will reduce the risks involved with will reduce the pain which we are taking for manually getting it uh, all the data so this kind of other robots are also there for the uh, in the underwater sector these are some of the clients and the applications uh, our major client was uh, drdo npol the Naval Physical Oceanographic Laboratory, we have supplied it to uh, one of our ROV to them, which is a wing of uh, DRDO. We have supplied uh, two of our ROVs to uh, Naval Science Technological Laboratory, NSTL, which is also a, a DRDO wing. Uh, we are working with the uh, railways across India. We are working with various dam sectors like the Tungabhadra Dam, like the Kalarkuti Dam in Kerala, like uh, Indira Sagar Dam, many other dams across India. Also, various shipping companies. So, these are major clients which we have worked with. Uh, we have supplied uh, one of our ROVs to Indian Coast Guard, also, which is deployed in Andaman and Nicobar Islands to study various uh, defense activities across there. So uh, such kind of applications are also there. This is our team of uh, founders, co-founder and uh, our advisors. Mr. Johns and Mr. Kanapa has been working very tirelessly to achieve this over the period of three years. And they both are engineers from IITs. Uh, they were working in different sectors, came along and built uh, this company, I wrote. We were awarded uh, various awards uh, from Technology Startup Award from Government of India, India Innovation Challenge Award. We were awarded IDEX Defense Challenge Award, and we are working with uh, the uh, many of the defense organizations for developing various defense uh, underwater defense assets. Yeah, thank you from, from my side. I hope uh, the session was very fruitful for you. Thank you. Thank you, Njiakil, for wonderful presentation. It was really insightful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we'll move to our question and answer session. We have got, uh, I mean, plenty question. Maybe we're not able to answer uh, all due to we are running short of time, but we will try to address few. Let me uh, share one question, uh, which was uh, like uh, from Dr. Shankar, they asked like, you know, after uh, uh, your mission, how you uh, uh, gathered your data and how do you process your data? Uh, Engineer Akhil, I mean, the question is uh, like, after uh, your post mission, I mean, data post processing, you do have any kind of particular software or it is available generally in the market? Yeah, we have particular softwares and many other softwares are there in the market. Like what kind of research activities has to be done, it depends upon those. Uh, so uh, the reporting or uh, data collection can be done using various uh, software technologies. Uh, there's a question uh, from Mr. Manish. Why we stress over the wired uh, rope device? Is it possible to use wireless uh, rope 
if please tell me the specification wireless uh, yeah i have read this question from mr manish uh, wireless communication is very difficult under water uh, uh, so we some mode of uh, uh, communication has to be established or else uh, using the under, autonomous underwater vehicle uh, you can set a path or set a location set the geo coordinates which you want to travel so all those things can be set uh, initially and it will cover that area cover that location uh, cover cover all the geo coordinate points and it will come back to the initial locations so that kind of autonomous operations can also be done but the live uh, controlling is uh, difficult in the underwater section yeah i mean the uh, radio waves uh, not moves uh, so good in the underwater like yeah, radio, uh, like radio communication is not at all possible only acoustic sound waves communication is possible through waters yeah it's true i hope mr munis has got his answer uh this question may be mr rashid take i mean is uh, mr rashid um what is the like rov speed uh, generally i think uh, we lost connection uh, with rashid maybe he will join soon uh maybe indira khil can address this question i mean uh, what is the uh, my speed uh, which you are uh, doing your uh, operations or ropes speed can be uh, varied from around the 2 knots to 8 knots and uh, uh, very high speeds of rovs can also be achieved but the point of inspection or the videographic inspection uh, is that you have to maneuver your rov in certain speed limits to get a good quality of data so it is preferred to use low speed you during data capturing during maneuvering you can use your uh, speed based upon the controlling ability based upon the water currents uh, all those factors you can use your uh, speed thank you indira kill please can you stop sharing your screen yeah sure sure so now we will try to move another question uh, which we got from uh, our offline why we call it underwater drone indira kill i mean this is just for a city i mean drone something we feel uh, we can uh, just fly so why we call it uh, underwater drone <laughs> because it can be flyed underwater <laughs> yeah i mean uh, with the joy yeah yeah for aerial drones we use the uh, aerial thrusters and for underwater section we use the underwater thrusters all the controlling is done using the joystick so it is basically an underwater drone but uh, underwater side like i said before the communication is not possible mm, radio communication is not possible so it has to be wired 
Okay. That is the only main difference. And uh, there is one question from Hanu Prakash. Is it okay to use ROV for cleaning oil tanks? Yeah, ROV can be used to clean oil tanks as well. Uh, that is not particularly ROVs. Uh, for oil tanks, the maneuverability, because the viscosity is too much, uh, it is difficult to maneuver an ROV. So there we have crawlers. Crawlers kind of robots are there. That is mainly used for uh, oil tanks. Hope Mr. Bhanu has got the answer. Uh, they have a specialized vehicle which do the specific job like crawler. It's similar yeah. kind of concept. So, Correct. yeah. Dear all, we are running uh, out of time. And if you have some questions, please mail us on Uttarakhand SC at the rate iindia.org. Our panelists will be happy to mail you as soon as possible. Now would like to invite engineer S.C. Chauhan, Honorary Secretary, Uttarakhand State Center, Institution of Engineers for vote of thanks. Sir, over to you, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Omit Kumarji. Honorable Dr. Hemant O. Thakre, President, Institution of Engineers, Commander Dr. B.M. Bandarkar, Chairman, Marine Engineering Division Board, Dr. G. Rangnathan, Chairman, Committee for Advance of Technology and Engineering, Engineer Dhanamchand, Chairman, Uttarakhand State Center, and all council members, corporate members, our committee members, key speakers, moderators, other engineers, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to all of you. It is my great privilege to propose a word of thanks on this wonderful occasion of webinar on underwater drones. On behalf of Institution of Engineers, Uttarakhand State Center, I extend my gratitude to Honorable Dr. Hemant O. Thakre, President, Institution of Engineers, Commander Dr. B.M. Bandarkar, Chairman, Marine Engineering Division Board, Dr. G. Ragnathan, Chairman, Committee for Advancement of Technology and Engineering, for sparing such a time for from their busy schedule and gracing this occasion. I thank and appreciate to Uttarakhand State Center Organizing Committee for conducting this informative and knowledgeable session. I also extend my gratitude to Dr. Nilanjan Sen Gupta, Director, Technical of Institution of Engineers, for providing such a wonderful platform for this webinar. I express my heartly gratitude to our both the panelists, learned panelists, Engineer Satar Rasid and Engineer Akhil Manse, and our uh, but wonderful moderator, Mr. Amit Kumar Singh, to enrich us with a with water drone and its application. Okay, just uh, they have <coughs> underwater drone. Are uh, just uh, they have our panelists have told. Just I am going to summarize. Underwater drone are the submersible waterproof vehicle that enable the user to explore the underwater environment. It is operated by the crew aboard on the vessel. These drones are able to navigate through underwater current, though through one or two propellers, two or more propellers. As described by our learned uh, panelist, underwater drone are equipped with a camera with a powerful lighting to record good quality of footage even in the dark underwater environment. It works either wirelessly or through wired connection. These drones are very complex and serve a wide variety of the purpose. As you have 
seen the number of the active just a scientific oil research oil exploration hydro dams vessels and uh, uh, some other the deep also just like a tunnel also they are told in the tunnel so where this uh, man cannot approach so this underwater drone can help help us for working we feel and other we feel very proud that uh, such type of this underwater drone nowadays uh, nowadays are being manufactured in our country as told my by mr akil this uh, factory and their company in the cochin this india is manufacturing this underwater drone in our nation staff this is the very proud for us so our nation is also pitching make in india and vocal for local for the self reliance so just this is the very wonderful information that uh, in our india this uh, com- uh, uh, this iro r i r o v company of mr this uh, akhil akhil ji is working on this and they are research and uh, their innovation work is in progress on this vena i would also like to express my gratitude to all esteem delegates for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a great successful and having a some wonderful question after this this session so now we come to end of this session once again thank you for to you all but in the last we will get we will stand up for national anthem so please everybody get stand up and for national anthem so so we'll put this national anthem amit ji yes sir ha ah, yes yes start thank you once again thank you uh, with the thank you everybody thank you with the permission of chairman can we close the session yes yes now in the end we close the session thank you thank you all for uh, your presence we really overwhelmed with this 100 plus mark thank you ai thank you participant thank you akhil thank you shatran okay. thank you thank you head office thank you thank commander you. bm bhandarkar sir thank no, you thank you so much oh. thank you thank you